Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer, and I'm uh, going to walk through some answer keys uh, on this thing. I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to do all of these guys because I don't have time. And if you want every single answer, just check the PDF sheet for me. This is more to show you the process and have a different way to show you how these things are working. All right, so turn the pH of strong acids. So this says weak acids, so it starts out with a little review. How do I do strong acids? Very simple. Because they go to completion, you just go negative log of that particular concentration, 0.5. And I believe the pH, this is going to be uh, uh, 0.3. This one would be uh, point negative log of 0 0.01. If you just, depending on how well you're starting to get familiar with the log system, just to powers of 10, it's 2. Um, all right, you can dump that one in there as well, and you can get your answer. Uh, in the previous question, why is it not important to know even the type of acid? Um, well, it just we just need to know that it's strong. There are six strong acids, and they go 100% to product. Um, so I don't really care about anything else. Next, um, for a weak acid, what are the two factors that affect um, how much acid produces? So I have H x um, plus water will produce H3O plus ions and then plus x negative. What determines how much does I get? It's kind of like a, like, a, like a financial investment. How much you start with matters. So your, your concentration. Now if you poured concentrated vinegar on your salad dressing, you would not be able to eat that it would be disastrous. It would completely dissolve your salad. You're eating about a 3% solution. 100% solution, you wouldn't be able to get that fork anywhere near your mouth. It would be nasty. Really nasty. You think vinegar smells bad? Try concentrated vinegar. It's nasty. Then, how, how much of it, when we go in this back and forth battle, when we get stuck in like stalemate, where are we? We call that strength. Okay, are we product favored? We have our reactant concentrations, we have product concentrations. Where are we when we get stuck? We call this strength. And it is all described by a value of K. K is the strength. Ka for acids, Kb for bases, but we call it Ka and it's called the strength. All right, good enough. Next up, weak acids undergo hydrolysis. All right, so this is where I'm not gonna, definitely not going to do all these problems. Check your PDF if you want. Write that hydrolysis equation out. So we'll do, let's say, HF. HF plus H2O yields h 3 plus plus F negative. All right, write out the ex expression. This time we call it, because it's an acid, I'm doing the acid version of this, we call it the Ka expression. This just tells that, that I'm using, I often want wish they had put HA in there, or H hydrolysis. That's really what it's doing. So it's the products over reactants. I have concentration of F negative concentration of H3O plus, and then we have the concentration of HF. All right, next page. It says, um, to determine the pH of these guys, grab my answer key here. All right, now this particular process <coughs> is Kind of, sometimes I use the word litigious, there's a bunch of little pieces to it, but you'll find that it is always the same. Always. And if you do one of them, you might think that sounded, that was a little unusual. If you do a second one, well, that was the same as the first. And then you do three, four, or five, they're all the same. So eventually it becomes just like a process that you do. So it says we have a term of the pH of a, a 0.1 molar HCN solution. Okay, so this is detailed out pretty well on the PDF, but we have HCN plus H2O 
yields H3O plus plus CN negative. I have this guy, which is HF, I'll kind of do them both together here, plus H2O yields H3O plus plus F negative. Initial concentrations of these things. Oh, they're having them be the same. Initial stoic ratio end. They're both starting at point 0.1. Point 0.1. So they start battling back and forth and they eventually get stuck in a stalemate situation. And at that point, there's a certain amount of H plus ions that are present. How do we figure that out? Well, water's not going to play a role in our, because it's a pure liquid. Hence the reason why it does not show up in my equilibrium expression. K expression. I'm going to lose X of this. I'm going to gain X of this. And I'm going to gain X of this. 0.1 minus X. And I have X. And I have X. Here I have 0.1. Uh, sorry, it's minus x, plus x, plus x, 0.1 minus x, and x, and x. All right, so next up here, how do I go about getting the H, that x value? Okay, you put it into your expression, which I'm going to write here. Ka is equal to concentration of H plus ions, concentration of Cn negative, Okay, concentration of HCN. Proliferate that guy into there. I'm going to use my shortcut rule. My Ka is listed right here. 6.2e to the negative 10th equals x squared over 0.1. I use my shortcut rule right there. Makes the math easier. Not much difference. Solve for x. Multiply by 0.1, square root, x equals, in this case, 7.8, 7.8 e to the negative sixth. That's the x, which also represents the h plus ions. So, negative log that value to get your actual pH. That guy goes in here, and you get 5.1. Right? That takes a little bit of practice, but that's the whole process. This one, it's no different, except you got a different Ka value. Ka, again, what is that? That's strength. That means when you're battling back and forth and you get in a rut or a stalemate, where are you? Well, this is much, this one's negative tenth. The HF is 6.6 .6 e to the negative fourth. That's much larger, which means we get more product, which means when this one gets caught in stalemate, we have more product, and therefore more H plus ions, therefore more acidic. Plug those guys into the expression, which I'm not going to write out. You can check it out. It looks just like that one. On the top, we have these two guys, which are both going to be x's. So we'll just call it x squared, x times x if you'd like. Uh, and then at the bottom is this guy right here. And I'm just going to put point 0.1, which is my shortcut rule. And solve for x. x equals, now it should be much larger now because... This value is larger, it's stronger. And this one, when you do that guy, is going to be 0 0.008121. One, two. And of course, at that point, we get a pH negative log of this thing. And this is going to give me a pH, much smaller pH, which is 2.09. All right. All right, so why is it so smaller? Because it's, I got more H plus ions there, which means I'm more acidic. Why is that? Because I got them stronger. For a given acid, given strength, the one that's got the larger Ka value is going to be more acidic. Why don't they have the same pH? Because of strength. Or pH, uh, the Ka constant. All right, um, well, here's a good question here. Who's considered stronger? Well, HF is considered stronger. Why? Simply because of the larger Ka value. Which of these two acids will neutralize more base? And this is the one that sometimes causes people problems. And the answer is neither. Okay? Just in this situation, it's this, they're, they're the same. And the reason why they're the same is because they both have one H on them. And if I have, let's say, 10 of these guys, all right, then I would get 
10, I could potentially get 10 H pluses. And each one of those H pluses can neutralize one hydroxide, and therefore they all can neutralize the same amount of base. It's just a matter of how quickly they get there. Okay? Um, it's, a, it's another, maybe getting a little too deep into this particular concept, but essentially it's like if your mom and dad gave you allowance every week, um, or if they gave you the year's allowance in one at one sitting. So here's all your allowance at once. And that's all it really comes down to is how much you get at once versus a little at a time. But eventually you get the same amount. Um, is it possible for HCN to be more acidic than HF? We just mentioned that this guy has a lower Ka value. So inherently not as acidic as HF. Is it possible to have um, it, it, the student hypothesis, it's impossible for this guy to be more acidic than that guy is. That's, a, that's false. There are two factors. Now, it's, uh, it's, not a, it's impossible for HCN to be stronger because it's got a smaller Ka value, but it could be more acidic if you were to ramp up the concentration of HCN. Keep in mind the vinegar. Vinegar is not a strong acid, but if you ramp up that concentration, it, gets, it, it has the ability to produce some amount of H plus ions. And therefore, it's quite acidic. All right, determine the pH of a, of a three more. And all of these guys are the same. Okay, so we have another example here where I have all the same. I have different acids. And all these problems, you can look on the paper. They're the same as the ones you just did above, so I'm not going to do them now. And in the end here, um, so check the PDF for the answers. Try those out here on your own. Is, again, is it possible for a weaker acid to, produce, to be a producer of pH that's lower? Yes. If that weak acid, I mean the Ka is very small, uh, very low, well then you need a concentration that's going to ramp up. And then you get to the same spot. And that is all we'll do for this particular video. Thank you very much.